All praises to the Most High. Once again, we're going to start in the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22. All right, let's go ahead and read it. And it says, For Yah, or Yahweh, or Yahuwah, will not forsake his people. So Yah is not going to forsake his people. His Bahia, his chosen. Those who are called by, by my name, saith Yah. First Chronicles, I believe it's First Chronicles, or is it Second Chronicles? First Chronicles or Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, why are we called? Why are we kara, to kara, to be called by the name of the Most High? It's a reason why. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 22 says, For Yahweh will not forsake his people. He will not forsake us. He will never leave us or forsake his people. Why? Why won't Yah forsake his people? There's something at stake here. He says, for his great name's sake, because it pleaseth Yahweh to make you his people. The only reason why we are called Israel, the only reason why through all the suffering, all the dehumanization that we have been through as a people in this country, in all the countries and nations that we have been scattered to as a people. I'm talking about so-called black people, so-called African, African Americans, so-called Africans. Those who are true descendants from Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. We have underwent some of the most dehumanizing situations. Stere stereotypical condemnation and judgment from the other nations but all this was prophesied and all this was said would come upon us if we did what turn from the covenant that we made with the most high at mount sinai and we did that as a people our, our forefathers did that they forsook the covenant of the most high and went and served other gods therefore the most high has scattered us throughout the nations of the olam the erit the earth and the world but he has not forsaken us. The Most High has always had a remnant from the house of Israel in every dispensation of captivity that we have faced as a people. He's always going to call out a righteous remnant. And because of that, for his name's sake, because his name's sake is on the line, his reputation is on the line, his name is on the line. And it, it has nothing to do about our name as being Israelites. All of this Yah is doing for his honor, for his esteem. Because it is his reputation that's on the line. I have no reputation of my own. My, represent, my representation or my representation should be that of the most high Yah. I should represent as a man of Yah, the character, the discipline the counsel of Yah in my life. Why? Because I am called to be an ambassador to represent Yah's name, his namesake, on the earth. Why? Because we have been called or called by his name. No other nation upon the face of the earth who the Most High revealed his name to. And I'm not just talking about the phonics or the linguistics or the alphabetical pronunciation or spelling of his name that's important but a name in the hebrew which is the hebrew word shame that word shame or name in the hebrew it defines the mark of a person's individuality that name sets them apart not only the phonics or the letter or how the name is written but there's authority, there is characteristics, there is a sake that follows that particular name. See, when those that know me, my, my government name is Patrick. But those that know me as Patrick Damon Horn, 
not only do they associate me with the name I was given, but they associate my character. They associate me being a husband, me being a father. Those that know me know that I am a preacher or a teacher of the word. They associate all these attributes with my name. So my name just doesn't represent the phonics or the sound of the syllables associated with my name, but my name represents my character, my integrity, me being a father, a husband, a preacher, a teacher of the word of the most high. And when people say my name, it marks my individuality. They either say, well, that, you know, Patrick Horn, you know, JC's son. Yeah, 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 James Horn, yeah, yeah, James Horn's son. Patrick Horn, that, that's a good man there. He's a hard worker. Or they can say, oh, that Patrick Horn, he's something else, man. You better watch out for him. Why? Because my character, my integrity, the way that I'm living my life dictates to the authority and to how people judge me. Okay? It's the same thing with the Most High. His name is great. And because of his great name, his reputation, his authority, his preeminence as being Yah, Yahweh, a Yahuwah, that name has significance in the earth. And because we as his people are called by his name, then we as a nation of people represent the same authority, the same power, the same character that our Heavenly Father possess. If we go back to the story of Jacob, when Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and the angel said to him, no longer shall your name be Jacob, but from this point on you, you shall be known as Israel. For as a prince have you power with Yah and with man. Now let's look this up right quick before we go any further. Let me look this up right quick, brothers and sisters. I want us to understand the Hebraic definition of the name Israel. Y'all see right here in the search. I don't know if y'all can see that. But right here in my search, I already got it pulled up here for some reason. So I must have been looking at this. Now, the name Israel wasn't given to us by a man. It wasn't given to us by our mothers or our fathers or our ancestors. The name Israel was given to our father, Yaakov, by Yah himself. And why is that? Because the Most High wanted a nation that represented his authority and his power in the earth realm. Let's look at this right quick. Let me pull it up. All praises to the Most High, Yah. Let me know if y'all see that. Can y'all see that definition there on the screen? All right, we got a one. All right, look at this definition right here, brothers and sisters. On the screen here, Yisrael. Yisrael. All right. That Hebrew word means this. He will rule as Elohim. He will rule as Yah. That's what it means. We're supposed to be ruling as Yah does in heaven. We're supposed to be ruling on earth. That was Yah's intention for us as a people. We were supposed to be a nation of priests. Okay. But because we forsook the covenant of the Most High, then we have went into captivity. Of course, we all know that. But now the Most High is restoring us to the legitimacy and the relevancy of the name Israel. How, how many of you have heard the term, live up to your name? <laughs> live up to your name. My father used to tell me and my brothers that all the time. Listen, y'all not going to go out here and shame my name. What did, what, what did, what did our fathers and mothers mean when, when they said that? You ain't going to put no shame on my name. That means that you wasn't going to bring any dishonor or discredibility to their reputation. Why? Because, because you was born into that family. And because you was a son or a daughter of your mother or father, then you represented them as being their son and daughter. 
I remember my father used to tell me that all the time. <laughs> he was big on that. He was big on that. And because I loved my father, me and my brothers and sisters, we loved our father. We didn't bring shame on my father's name. Whenever someone would speak of us, they would speak highly of my father. Whenever someone spoke of my father, they would speak highly of his children. Why? Because he had his household in order. Had his household in order. And those that know my father, my father did not play with us. Not one bit. <laughs> All praises to the most high, yeah. All right, we get Brother Devin in here. All right. Uh, Devin, we got you in. All right. So it's the same thing with the Most High. The name Israel means this. He will rule as Yah. So that's what we're striving for, my brothers and sisters. Who, who do you think will be ruling in the new kingdom? In heaven and in earth. We are. We're going to be ruling in that kingdom. We're going to rule and reign with who? With Messiah. That's who we're going to be ruling and reigning with. With Messiah. Hallelujah. So when we understand the validity of of who we are as Israelites, then we will begin to walk in the sonship, in the daughtership, knowing that we are a child of the king, knowing that no longer do we see the name Israel being a privilege, but it's a responsibility. We have a responsibility to uphold. We have a charge to keep I have. And the most high to honor and to glorify. Didn't the old, old Kedushams used to say that? I used to hear my grandmother say that. A charge to keep I have. And they would say a, a God to glorify. So we have a charge to keep. And we have to honor the most high with our life. Why? Because it pleased him to choose us as his people. It was pleasing to him to choose us even though all the sin and the wickedness that we have committed, it still pleased him to choose us. So by knowing that, I have a charge to keep. I have a responsibility that I'm called to. Why? Because I'm supposed to be representing the rulership and the kingdom of Yah. Did not Yahshua say that the kingdom of Yah is within you? Yes, there's going to be a physical kingdom established upon the face of the earth, but the kingdom of Yah is already in you, my brothers and sisters. Represent that kingdom well. You are an ambassador of the kingdom of the Most High. You represent the kingdom no matter where you are, no matter who you're talking to. I don't care if it's a white man, a Mexican man, a Chinese man, whoever you're talking to, whatever situation you're in, you represent the kingdom of Yah. Why? Because Yah has called you for his name's sake. It's his reputation that's on the line. Oh, Toda Yah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to Psalms to Helium, chapter 23. To Helium 23, verse 1 through verse 3. And when you get there, throw a one in the chat. Hallelujah. All right, we're there. And this is the Psalm of Dawid. He says, Yahweh is my shepherd. I shall not want. When Yahweh is your shepherd, when he is your Raha, he's your shepherd. He's the one that's watching over you. He's the one that's taking care of you. See, Yah, Yah is our shepherd. Yet, Most High has given men spiritual gifts to be under shepherds. I say under shepherds. They're underneath the shepherding of the Most High and to watch over the flock of Yah, which he has purchased with his own blood. 
He has made us overseers over the flock of Yah. The Most High said, I would give you ra'ah, pastors after my own heart, shepherds that would lead and guide you and feed you with knowledge and understanding. But Yah is our shepherd. And we, should, we have no want for nothing when Yah is our shepherd. We have no lack. We have no scarcity. He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Look at this. He restoreth my nephesh, my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Y'all lead me in the paths of righteousness. He calls my feet to trod in the path that is Zadik, or Zadika of righteousness. He leads me in the right way. He calls me to do the right thing. He leads me in the path of righteousness for my name's sake, for Pathwell's name's sake. No, for his name's sake. Yah is leading us according to his righteousness. See, it's not our righteousness. But he leads us in the path of righteousness, his righteousness, for what? His name's sake. Because the righteousness that I possess is the righteousness of Yah. I have no righteousness of my own outside of what is right in the eyes of the Most High. Me doing right is not predicated upon what I think is right because if I path well, if I do what I think is right in my own eyes, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I'm gonna be a messed up individual, point blank. But if I'm doing right according to what God has commanded me to do, then the right that I'm doing is His righteousness because Yah is the one that determines what is right and what is wrong. He is the one that determines what is light and what is darkness. All right? So the righteousness that we walk in gives no credit to us. It gives all credit to him. Why? Because it is he that is leading us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Because his name is on the line. It's his reputation that we are upholding as a people. And when we understand that, we will, walk, we will walk more circumspectly. We will examine our hearts even the more to make sure that everything that we're doing is pleasing unto him. Why? Because it is his name's sake. And that's why he leads us in the paths of righteousness. Hallelujah. To Helium chapter 79, verse 9. To Helium chapter 79, verse 9. Mm -mm -mm. I, I like this verse here. Man, I love this verse. All praises to the Most High Yah. To Helium chapter 79, verse 9. When you get that, throw a one in the chat. To Helium chapter 79, verse 9. Man, I love this verse here. Man, this verse right here does something to my spirit. Look at what Dawid says, David says here. Mm -mm. He said, help me or help us. Help us, y'all. Help your people. We need your help. The Hebrew word for help here is azar, azar. And the Hebrew word azar means to surround. That is to protect or aid, to succor, to succor. Surround us, O Yah. Be there here to protect you, protect us. Help us, O Yah, as your people. That should be our daily prayer. Help us, Yah. Azar. Let your spirit surround us. In everything that we do. Be our going in and our going out. Help us, O oh Yah, 
of our salvation. You are our salvation. Look at this Hebrew word here, salvation, right quick, y'all. Look at this Hebrew word. Yes, shy. Yes, shy. Which is the root word for Yeshua or Yahoshua. Yes, shy. Liberty, deliverance, safety, salvation. Yah, you are the one that gives us safety. You are the one that gives us deliverance. You are the one that calls us to prosper. He says, O Yah of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. He said, for thy esteem, for thy name, surround us. Succor, help us, Yah. For you are our salvation. And for the esteem of your name. And deliver us. And purge away our sin. Purge our iniquity away, Father. Through your Yahshua. Through your salvation that you have given unto us. Through Yahoshua, Yahshua. Hamashiach. In whom you have provided to be our salvation. Purge our sin. Purge away our sin. For what? Thy name sake. Everything that Yah has done. It's only been for his name's sake. He has chosen us as his people. Only for his name's sake. He leads us in the path of righteousness. Only for his name's sake. My brothers and sisters. We are those who bear forth the name of Yah. We are Kalara. We are called by his name. We represent the very namesake of Yah. You, you hear men say that. That's my namesake right there. They got their eldest son. And they're proud of their eldest son. And they say, that's my namesake right there. Why? Because our son and our children are going to carry on our legacy and reputation in the earth. Even to this day, my father been dead. Wow, how long my father been dead? Man, it's been a long time. Mama, Ima, Ima Labia, how, how, how long has daddy been dead? 22 years my father has been deceased, y'all. And to this very day, when people see me or my brethren or my sisters, as soon as they see us, we point them right back to my father. When they see us, his children, their remembrance is brought back to my father. Why? Because we as his children, my father, we are his children. We represent his reputation and his legacy and everything that everybody knew him of. Or knew that he was about to this very day. Same thing with the Most High. We are his children. When people see us, it should point them back to Yah. Our life should reflect the power of Yah. Why? Because the path that we're walking, the walk that we're walking, the talk that we're talking, we are walking it and we are talking it. Why? Because it is the shepherd that is leading us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. This whole life that we're living is all to give credibility. It is all to represent his name, his authority, his reputation in the earth. All praises to the Most High. Mm -mm -mm. Psalms chapter 106, verse 8. To hear them, chapter 106, verse 8. When you get there, throw a one in the chat. To hear them, 106 and verse 8.
All praises to the Most High Yah. For those of you who are coming in, we're talking about the namesake of Yah. We are called, and he has elected us as a people only for his namesake. It's not about you. It's not about I. We have been given the name Israel. That is a name that Yah has given us as his people. And we are those who are to rule as Yah rules. That's what the Hebrew definition of Israel means. We should be a prince, both daughters and sons of Yah, and we have power with man and with Yah. And that's what Yah is restoring. He's restoring us to our rightful place. That's why he's, he's restoring certain knowledge and understanding unto us as a people. For in order for us to rule in the new kingdom, in the new earth, the renewed earth, in the renewed heavens that the Most High is going to bring about in the last and evil days. In order for us to rule as a people, we have to understand and walk in the righteousness of Yah. No king can be a righteous king unless he is walking in righteousness himself. Okay? So in order for us to enact and to judicate the righteous rulings of Yah, we as a people, as individuals, must walk in righteousness ourselves. So your Most High is restoring to us the righteous path. He is restoring to us the ancient paths to walk in. Because once we walk in that path, that we can help other people walk in that path as well. Hallelujah. Look what he says in Psalms. Once again, Psalms chapter 106, verse 8. He says, nevertheless, he saved them. Why did God save us as a people? Why did the Most High keep delivering us out of our wickedness and out of our sin and out of the, the muck and miry clay that we kept? Falling into? Why did he keep saving us? For his name's sake, Yah made a promise. Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, he made a promise unto our forefathers that from their loins that he would establish a nation of people for his name's sake. So the Most High kept saving us and delivering us. He has given us a better way of salvation through Yahshua the Hamashiach. For his name's sake. He says, nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his power to be known. See, y'all keep saving and delivering us. The only reason why we are here today is so that we might represent and that by us and through us, the Most High is going to make his power no, in the earth. Why? For his name's sake. To helium, Psalms chapter 109, verse 21. Let's go to Psalms 109, verse 21. Put a one in the chat when you get there. Psalms 109, verse 21. Hallelujah. Look what he says here. The psalmist writes again. He says, but do thou for me, O Elohim, for thy name's sake. Dawid said, look, whatever you do to me, Father, do whatever pleases you for your name's sake. Even though David sinned. He did something that was egregious, mur murdering another man in order to cover up his adultery, adulterous affair. But yet in all of that, Dawi says, do unto me, Yah. My life is not my own. Do to me whatever sees fit. As long as your name and your representation, your namesake is intact, you can do whatever you want to do to me. 
But just don't take your spirit from me. Used to be an old song that the whiners sing. Y'all know that, that old group, the whiners? You can rebuke me, reprove me, chastise, but don't take your joy from me. Don't take your joy from me, Father. Don't take your spirit from me. You can rebuke me. You can reprove me. You can chastise me, Father, but just don't take your spirit from me. Do whatever to me, Yah, that sees fit. Do whatever you see fit for your name's sake. How many of us can really say that? Didn't the Apostle Paul say that our lives are no longer our own, that we've been bought with a price? So therefore, honor Yah in your body? Why? Because whatever we do, we should do it all in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach to the esteem and to the honor of Yah. Why? Because it is his name's sake. Do unto me, Yah, whatever you see fit for your name's sake. That's what Dawid said. Because thy mercy is good. He said, because I know whatever you're going to do to me, whether you chastise me, Father, whether even if it's your will to take my life, you can do whatever you want to do to me. Why? Because I know that your mercy is good. Your mercy is told in the Hebrew. Your mercy is good. Your mercy is beneficial. It is excellent. There is no injustice in your mercy father whatever you do to me it's going to be done because of your mercy so do unto me what you see fit for your namesake father because i know that your mercy is good and he says because thy mercy is good he said deliver thou me deliver me yah because your mercy is good What's that other song? What's that other song that the guy, I forgot his name, but the song goes like this. Great is your mercy towards me, your loving kindness towards me, your tender mercies I see day after day. Forever thankful towards me, always providing for me. Great is your mercy, I see. Great is your grace. That song right there. Great is the mercy of Yah towards us. Not because we've done anything right but because of his name's sake. He has extended his mercy towards us, and therefore we are uh, d delivered as a result of his mercy. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to be chosen as one to bear the name's sake of Yah. Hallelujah. All praises to the Most High Yah. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 7. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 7. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 7. Hallelujah. When you get there, throw a one in the chat. Mm-mm-mm. Boy, these, these, these verses, boy, I tell you. <laughs> Woo, yeah. What a mighty Yah we serve, y'all. What a mighty Yah we serve. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, once again. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 21. We're going to go ahead and read it. Jeremiah says this. Chapter 14, verse 7. He says, O oh, Yahweh, though our iniquities, they testify against us. Our iniquities testify against us. Our sin witness against us. 
The transgression that we have committed as individuals, the transgression that we have committed as a nation of people, it testifies against us. It clearly shows. It clearly is a witness against us. We're reminded of it every day when we look at our brothers and sisters who are still in darkness, still trapped by the wages of sin and death. It reminds us of how iniquitous we have been as a people, our forefathers have been. When we read the scripture, the scriptures, the Sefer reminds us of our transgression. It witnessed against us. But look what Yeremiah says. He said, even though our transgression, it testified against us. Do thou too, do thou it for thy name's sake. He said, y'all, our iniquity clearly shows. It testified against us. But even in our iniquitous state, do unto us for thy name's sake. Remember thy name's sake, y'all. Remember that your reputation is on the line. You the one that called us. Didn't Moshe remind the Most High of that? When Moshe came down with the two tablets of stone, and he saw the abominations that our ancestors were committing, sexual immoralities, drunkenness, dancing and around the golden calf, and giving credibility, credibility to a golden calf or an image that can neither hear, speak, walk, had no life in it. And God was angered with us and said unto Moshe, look, I'm going to destroy, I'm going to kill everybody. And I'm going to start, I'm just going to start over from scratch. He said, I'm going to destroy everybody. And then Moshe had to remind the Most High, no, you can't do that. Then all the other nations are going to look at you and say, who is this mighty one that brought these people out of the land of Egypt? But yet, Look at them now. He had to destroy them. Right after delivering them, how, how do you think that would make the most high look? How, you, how do you think that would have, rep would have damaged his reputation in front of all the other nations? So Moshe had to remind him, no, you got to keep your promise. You got to keep your covenant. I'd rather you take my life and spare this for your name's sake. Why? Because it's Yah's reputation that's on the line. This walk of life, the faith that we have in the Most High, it's not mediocre. It's not a light thing. He says, Do thou it for thy name's sake, for our black slidings are many, and we have sinned. Against thee. He said, Our backsliding is many, Yah, and we have sinned against thee. But still do it for thy name's sake, Yah. Do it for thy honor, that you might be honored and that you might be esteemed. Let's skip down to verse 21 of the same chapter. Verse 21 of the same chapter. And when you get there, throw a one in the chat. Verse 21 of the same chapter. Chapter. He says here. He says, do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. He said, God, don't hate us. Don't abhor us. Don't utterly destroy us as a people. Even though we're in captivity. Even though we have sinned against us, chastise us as a people, correct us as a people, but do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember. He said, Yah Zakar, remember. Bring it back to your mind. Break not thy covenant with us. See, Yah has never broken covenant with us. We broke covenant with him. But if Yah utterly destroys us as a people, if Yah don't restore us as a nation of people, if Yah don't give us 
the inheritance of the promise that he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it would be a disgrace to his very throne. Why? Because Yah's namesake is on the line. His reputation is on the line, even when it comes to us as a people. Don't break your covenant with us, Yah. That's why Yah had to renew a covenant. He has to give us a renewed covenant that he will write his law in our hearts and in our minds. So if Yah don't do what he has purposed to do to us and for us as a people, it will be a disgrace to the very throne of Yah. So you hear me? I said, don't utterly up, abhor us, Yah. Don't hate us as a people. Even though we have sinned and our iniquity testify against us, we're not blameless before you, Yah. But for your name's sake, don't disgrace your throne, Yah. Give us mercy. Deliver us. Save us. That's why Yah had to do what he had to do with his son. He had to send Yahshua in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh that we might be the righteousness of Yah in him. He had to do it. Why? Because Yah's namesake is on the line. We are who we are today because of the namesake of Yah. His mercy has been extended to us because of his namesake. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 22. Ezekiel 36, verse 22. Put the one in the chat when you get there. Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verse 22. All right, we're there. I'm going to go ahead and start reading. Look, he said, this is the prophet Ezekiel speaking by the prophetic utterance of the Most High. He said, therefore, say unto the house of Israel. He said, these words are for you, house of Israel. This ain't for the other nation. This word here, this Dabar, is specifically for the house of Israel. The said, Yahweh Elohim, I do not do it for your sake. He said, what I'm doing, I'm not doing it for your sake. The audacity. <laughs> the scripture says that the most high is the high and lofty one. He said, Israel, I want you to go straight up. Word up. This is a word up for you. Straight up. I want you to know I ain't doing this for you. It's almost like a mother and the father having a way with child. And the child is out there doing all kind of stuff. But the child comes back to the mother and father and says, Dad, I, I, I need some money. I, I had eight all day and, and I, I, I need to eat. And the father and the mother look at and say, Look, I, I ain't doing this for your sake. I'm doing this for this for our sake. I'm doing this for my, my sake. Because my name is on the line. So it's a, 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 a situation like that. I'm not doing this to you or for you because you deserve it. Look what he said. He said, therefore say it to the house of Israel. This said, Yahweh Elohim. I do not this for your sake. He said, I'm not doing this for your sake, O house of Israel. But for my holy name's sake. He said, this, I'm doing this for my name's sake. I'm doing this for my set apart name. Which you have profaned among the heathen. He said, You have profaned my name. You have brought me to an open shame before the nations of people. He said, I'm not bringing deliverance to you or redemption to you for your sake. I'm doing it for my name's sake. Why? Because the very name that I've given you, the very name that you're called by, which is by the name of the Most High, that name you have profaned. You have profaned my name among the heathen. You have caused the heathen and gave them occasion to speak blasphemy against me as your God, unquote, as your Elohim, as your power, because of how you are here acting and behaving. He said, this I'm doing, I'm not doing it for your sake. I'm doing it for my set-apart name's sake. Why? Because my name you have profaned 
among the heathen, what did you went. He said, wherever I scattered you, he said, you profane my name among the nations. Where you went? He said, the restoration that I'm doing, the deliverance that I'm doing, the salvation that I'm going to bring to you, Israel, it's not for your sake, it's for my name's sake. And when we understand that, we have a greater appreciation for what God is doing and that he has made us a part of whatever it is that he's doing. Well, I didn't deserve the salvation and the mercy that I have today. I don't deserve it. And to be honest, my brothers and sisters, I haven't done a lot of the transgression and sins that other people have done. But that don't make me no better. But, but, but because what are the thoughts that I've thought? Some of the things I, I had said. If my thoughts are thoughts of fornication and adultery, then that makes me no better than the person that is actually doing fornication and adultery. If my speech or if I said something that is wicked and wrong, that makes me no better than the prostitute. On the street. Sin is sin. No matter how you slice the cake, sin is sin. It took the same mercy, it took the same favor of the Most High to save me from my sin as it did the cocaine act, the drug act, the prostitute, the drunkard, the fornicator. It still took the same mercy. It still took the same faith for me to believe. It still takes the same spirit of the Most High to lead and guide me into truth. It still takes the same word of God to reprove me and to examine my life and for me to modify the deeds of my ministers on the earth. There's no exception to the rule. Whatever God has done for me or for you, He has done it for His name's sake. Look what He goes on to say. He says, For my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen, when you went. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 through verse 20. Let's see. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 to verse 30. When we get there, put a one in the chat. Our trade puts in the chat humble, reflective consideration. Exactly. Our trade. That's what we got to do. Eh? It's, there's no reason for any of us to be filled with any type of pride at all. Reality check, Zakay uh, Demetrius said. All right, the verse is Matthews, Matthews chapter 19, verse 27 through verse 30. Matthews chapter 19, verse 27 to verse 30. Hallelujah. And these are the words of Yahshua Hamashiach himself. It says, then answer Peter. Akifa, and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have that for? Peter said, We're going to forsake everything to follow you. What are we going to get out of this? That's basically what Peter said. He said that we have forsaken all to follow thee. What shall we have that for? What are we going to get out of this? We're going to have left everything to follow you, Yahshua. What am I getting out of this? What benefit is it for me? And Yahshua said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye 
which I followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his splendor of glory. Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that has forsaken house or brother or sister, or father or mother or wife or children or lands, look at this. See, perspective is key. What is your intent? What's the reason? That you're doing what you're doing. You only serve it. Yeah, sure. To get something out of it. What's your motive? Reflective consideration. He says that if you have a second house, brother, sister, father, mother, wife, children, or lands, he said if you've done all of this, that's a catch. A caveat to this. There's a caveat to this. If you have forsaken mother, father, sisters, brothers, lands, what it is that you have forsaken to follow Yahshua? He said, if you've done this or forsaken this, what for my name sake? So all of this, have you forsaken all of this for the namesake of Yah, or have you forsaken all of this for your namesake? Have you done this to uphold the reputation of Yahshua? Have you done this to uphold the reputation of Yahweh of the Father's name? Have you done it to see what you can get out of it or for your own gain or for your own reputation or for your own glory or have you done it for the namesake of Yah? That's the question. He said, everybody that has done that has forsaken all what for my namesake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit Everlasting life. He said, Have you done this for, for me? Have you done this for my name's sake? Have you done this to be a witness and to represent the power of the kingdom of Yah? Have you done this to represent the coming kingdom in which I shall sit upon the throne of David? If you've done this for my name's sake, he says, that you shall receive a hundredfold and shall receive eternal, everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. See, there's always Always a catch to it. Are you doing this for the namesake of Yah? And if you are doing it for the namesake of Yah, and if you're not doing it for the namesake of Yah, I just want to let you know this. In verse 30, Yahshua said, Many that are first shall be last. Now, I'm telling you right now, if I'm the first one, second instance, if I'm in the store, and I'm checking out something, right? I'm going to purchase something. And I'm the first in line. And if there's someone behind me, I expect to go before the person that's behind me or the persons that is behind me. I don't expect for the cashier to say, oh, uh, the last one in line, you come up here and I'm going to bring you up first. You're going to see another side of iPad where going to come out. I'm going to have some choice words to say to somebody. But Yahshua says to make sure that your intentions, that, your, that, that you are doing this for the right reasons, he said those that are first are going to be last and those that are last are going to be first. And then we're going to see what type of attitude. We're going to see really did you do this? 
For my name's sake, or did you do this to be first? Did you do this to say, oh, well, I've been in the truth for 30 years. Surely I should get my crown first. I've been serving the most high all my life. I've been working. I, I haven't done what other people have done. I commit the sins that other people have committed. Surely I'm going to be first. No. Yahshua says, if you forsake all to follow me, you done it for my name's sake. He said that you shall receive a hundredfold. And you will receive eternal life. But oh, just let me let you know this. This is a fine print of this. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand that? Messiah put a fine print in that. He said, I'll let you know to make sure that you're doing this for the right reason. The first is going to be last, and the last is going to be first. Yeah, sure. That's something else right there, y'all. I'm telling you right now, I, I, I'm, I'm saying it again. If I'm standing in line at a grocery store, at the truck stop, and I'm first in line, I expect to get checked out first. I do not expect the cashier to say, hey, the last person that's behind this man that's in the front of the line, you come first. I'm going to check you out first. And the person that's in the Front of the line, or first in line, I'm going to check you out last. I'm going to be pissed off. I'll tell you that right now. I'm going to have some choice words with that cashier. I'll be like, no, I was here first. I was here first. Let me tell y'all a story right quick. You let me tell y'all this story. Okay. So, last week, I go to Las Vegas. I had a unit that I drove all the way from Indiana to Las Vegas, Nevada. All right, three day trip. I get there and I, I get there early. I told my wife, I'm going to be the first one there. I'm going to be the first one there, right? So I can get checked out first. So I pull up because I had a flight, y'all. Listen, I had a flight. I got, I got there seven in the morning. I had a flight that left out at 11 that I had to catch from Las Vegas airport. So I only got what? And, and the place didn't start checking out to around like 8.30. And when they check out the units, it, it could take an hour or it could take three or four hours, all depending on what type of unit or RV that you have. So I told my wife, I'm going to be the first one there so I can get checked out first because I had a little conversion van. I had an RV that was a conversion van. It was an RV unit. But it was a conversion van that was that was transferred or transformed into a RV. Nice unit, man. Them units be nice. All terrain, four wheel drive. They have showers in them. Everything. Them things be laid out. But anyhow, so I pull up and there's another man in front of me. I pull up beside the man. He said, "Yeah, I've been here ever since last night." I said, "Man, I should have got here last night." <laughs> but anyhow. He looks at me and says, yeah, this place, they take long to check out. I'm telling you right now, you're going to be here about three or four hours, five hours. And I'm like, man, I can't be here no three or four hours. I got a plane ticket. I got to, I just paid all this money for this flight that's leaving at 11 a.m. I got to be at the airport in about an hour or two hours, right? So he's telling me, oh, you're going to you gonna have to wait. You know, I was here first and everything. So 8.30 comes around. We go through the gate, we go into the office, and I go up to the dude, the, the checkout person that checked the units out, and I said, look, man, I said, uh, I said, uh, I got a flight at 11 a.m. I said, if I don't know that it'd take y'all four or five hours to check a unit out, I, I, I would have came a day before, or I would have scheduled for my flight to be a lot later in the day. He said, okay. He said, uh, he said, well, I can't guarantee no promises. Let me see what type of unit you got. So 
He looks at my paperwork. I have a JCO unit. The factory that makes my unit was a JCO unit. He said, oh, you got a JCO unit? He said, were well, you the first one here? I said, no, I wasn't the first one here. I said, this uh, older, was an older Caucasian man. I said, this gentleman here was here before me. He said, well, he got a Winnebago unit. He don't have a JCO unit. So it's a different check-in for your unit than for his unit. The Winnebago unit, the unit that the, the older white man had, it's going to take five hours to check him in. With you, he said, all that I got to do is sign your paperwork. I can send you on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can send you on, and then I can check out your un unit later because they give us 72 hours to check your, the JCO units out. But his unit, because it's a Winnebago unit, they want us to check his unit out within six hours. So it's going to take, I have to go ahead and do his unit first, and his unit is going to take longer to check out because it has more uh, 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 qualifications and things that we have to ex inspect. With your unit, I can just look through your unit, make sure there's no scratches on it, make sure everything is just running cracked up, and you're good. Long story short, that dude ended up being there five to six hours, and I ended up being there 30 minutes. And I was able to make my flight well before 11 a.m. For example, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And that's something how the Most High even did that, even for me. Hallelujah. I praise Yah. Yah shows his mercy in our everyday lives. And, and, and listen, y'all, listen, listen. That man, that man, when he saw him signing my paperwork, when he saw the dude signing my paperwork, he was mad. He was red as a beat. And he walked up there and said, I, I was first. I was the first one here just to let you know. So the dude signed my paperwork. He's a Mexican dude. He said, yeah, he always come in here. He's always itching, you know, put a bee in front of it. He said, he's always itching all the time. And, you know, I, I done told him several times, he brings in way to, uh, uh, Winnebago units. So it's going to take longer to check his unit out. He said, I don't even care. I'm, I'm going to get you on out of here first. Even though I was last, I was first. Hallelujah. Yeah, man, he was, he was mad, man, man. He was mad. But that goes to show you, my brothers and sisters, what Yahshua was saying. That's what Yahshua was saying. He said, if you're doing this for my name's sake, he said that you're going to receive a hundredfold. <laughs> he gives you all the good stuff first. You're going to receive a hundredfold and eternal life. And I'll say all for the namesake of Yahshua Hamashiach. But he goes on to say, fine print. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. And see, that puts it off into perspective. We should not be doing anything that we do should all be for the namesake of Yah. No matter whether we're first or last. Because those of us who are doing it for the namesake of Yah, we understand, listen, whether I'm first or whether I'm last, whether I'm a doorkeeper in the house of Yah, as long as I'm in the kingdom, that's all that matters. Yah, I would be the person. Yah, I don't have to sit on no thrones. I don't have to have no elaborate position in the kingdom, Father. Just make me the doorkeeper. Just make me one of the persons that open up the door for everybody to come in. And I'm satisfied with it. As long as I'm in the kingdom, why? Because whatever I do, whatever position that you give me, it is all for your name's sake, God. It's for you. It's to honor you. Not to honor myself. I remember. I remember. Years ago, when I was, uh, I was probably about maybe seven, seven or eight, somewhere around in there, and uh, our assembly, the Hebrew assembly that, that I was a part of, uh, at that time, we had purchased a building in Charlotte, North Carolina. We had a uh, assembly in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was a warehouse, and the brother in went in there and fixed it up and transformed that warehouse into a nice place for people to come and worship in uh Charlotte, North Carolina. That 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 probably was what man, that was that was a ooh, ooh. 
That was probably around the late 80s, I believe. Somewhere around the late 80s, early 90s when we got that building. I was a, I was a boy, but I still remember it, though. I got very good memory of a lot of things that happened in my childhood. But make a long story short, uh, I wanted a job <laughs> at the assembly. So I went to my pastor. I'll never forget. I told my pastor, I said, I said, I said, uh, at the time we call it Pastor Roberts. Pastor Roberts, can, can, can I have a duty or a job here at the assembly? And guess what job he gave me, y'all, to do? To open up the doors. When, it, when anybody would come in or out the assembly, I was the one to greet them and I would open up the door. And I was happy about that job. Mom, do you remember that? You remember that? Elton, do y'all remember that where I used to at the time out in Charlotte? I do. Yeah. 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 Boy, I was so excited to have that job, boy. I was, boy, I was there on time for that job. After service, I knew my post. All the other young brothers and kids my age, they was around playing, and I was at the door, opening up the door for everybody. Close the door. Open up the door. Shalom, 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 you know. And I was happy about that job. So y'all give me that job in the kingdom. As long as I'm in the house, in the kingdom, it don't make no difference whether I'm last or first. It don't make no difference whether I'm first or last. Just make me a doorkeeper in your house, y'all. As long as I'm in your house, that's all that matters to me, Father. That's all that matters. And that should be our attitude. Why? Because everything that we do is for the name's sake of Yah. Got a few more scriptures, my brothers and sisters. A few more. All right. Acts chapter 9, 9 verse 13. Acts chapter 9, verse 13. We're going to read verse 13 to verse 16, and then we're going to close it from there. I pray that this teacher was a great inspiration to your hearts today. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 9, verse 13 through verse 16. Put the one in the chat when you get there. All praises. All right, we did. All right, the book of Acts chapter 9, verse 13 through verse 16. And it said, Then Ananias answered, Master, I have heard by many of this man. Now look at this. This is talking about the Apostle Paul, his conversion. He went around killing and enslaving, killing and enslaving the believers. There's even some uh, uh, other writings. Some other writings that suggest that Paul was even one of the ones that was there during the time that Stephen was stoned. He was one of the witnesses that had Stephen killed. And he was also one of the ones during the time of James, when James was pushed off. James was pushed off a, some, a fleet of stairs and he fell. He got injured. And Paul was one of the ones that uh, was a part of that um, uh, riot that happened at that time. That's in another uh, writing, uh, another book, another book uh, that's not recognized by the canon of scriptures that we read today. But there's a story about Paul actually being one of the people or one of the persons that caused James, the brother of Yahshua, he was the leader, the leader of the General Assembly there in Jerusalem, where all the uh, evangelists and the elders and stuff were commissioned and sent out by the, uh, the the elders there in Jerusalem. And James was one of the bishops there, if I may use that terminology, right? And there's a story about Paul being one of the ones that uh, were that caused uh, James to be injured during a riot that he had um, that he had uh, stirred up during the time. Long story short, this is a uh, uh, a conversion of the Apostle Paul. And this is the prophet Ananias and Ananias that the Most High told Paul to go to. All right. It says, Then Ananias answered, Master, I have heard 
by many of this man, being Paul, or Saul of Tarsus, how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. See that? He had the authority to persecute, to imprison, and to bind all, all of those that call upon the name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, as the Messiah. See what Yahshua said? If you forsake all work for my name's sake. He goes on to say in verse 15. But the master, the sovereign one, said unto him, Yahshua said unto Ananias, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Goim or the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. He said, I have chosen him even though he has been one to persecute the saints, to kill the saints, to start all these insurrections against the movement of the way. That's what the apostles named their movement. It was called the way. And we are the Israelites, believers of the way. We are those who believe in the way. We walk in the way. The shepherd is leading us in the way or in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And we're following Yahshua HaMashiach. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We're not Christians. Not, neither is our movement Christianity. We are believers of the way. We are those who follow the way, the true house of Israel. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, he says, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Even the sufferings that we go through, my brothers and sisters, the trials, the tribulations that we have endured, it's all for the name's sake of Yah. Everything that Yah has done for us, Everything that Yah is doing in the earth, the restoration of the house of Israel, the destruction and judgment against the evildoers, the establishment of the physical kingdom of Yah upon the face of the earth is all being done for his name's sake. I pray that this teaching was a great inspiration to your heart today.